We're talking about Adcock up next, and this one we know has recently been in the news headlines, mostly because Brian Joffe has entered the fray and taken a big stake in Adcock. Right, so a long-established South African player in this environment. It starts out its life as a pharmaceutical retailer out in the Krugersdorp area, believe it or not, part of Tiger Brands for a while, then comes back out onto the market. Interesting operation, though. Kind of lost its way for the last sort of five or seven years. Lost a lot of market share and ground to Aspen, which has got a market cap 16 times larger. Adcock Ingram has got a market cap just below 10 billion rand. So, to be precise, 9.6 billion rand. PE here, 15.6, and a dividend yield. 1.6%. But I want to just also point out, in the recent times, of course, it was the subject of a big scrap between a Chilean company and Bidvest. Bidvest eventually won, but it has and now the effectively... And CFR Pharmaceuticals. Yes, exactly. So Bidvest now is like just under 40% of the shares, is not necessarily going any higher anytime soon, but it has taken control of the board, and in an alliance with the PIC, has got its own management at the helm. So now, of course, the operation is under fresh administration. The question is, what's going to happen next? And I suppose that's yeah. the question we have to ask you. Yeah. Look, what happened with Adcox is they were part of Tigers, and Tigers has got massive distribution and logistics capability. All of a sudden, Adcox gets spun out, and they've got none of this and they've got to build it. They've got to do all of their central warehousing. And this is massive for essentially a fast moving consumer goods company. Secondly, they lost the tender with the government on HIV AIDS uh, antiviral. So this was major. I mean, Aspen got the tender. And of course, they're under threat the whole time by generics because they've still got a large, a large amount of patent drugs. But the underlying business is still good. So. Brian Joffe and Bidvest, being specialists in logistics and management of stock and that, can and in help turnarounds. hugely, can help hugely with the company. It looks good enough so far. I mean, quite positive statements have come out. Certainly, uh, Joffe and, and the team have moved in there. They've written off a massive amount of stuff. Mm -hmm. So the next set of results will probably be extremely good because you're measuring it off a very, very low base. The market's not convinced yet. Mm. And I suppose that's reflected in the share price, yes. Paul, that the market isn't uh, yes, convinced that of the story. Yes, because spike to 70 Rand was when the fight was going on and everyone was buying shares, and Bidvest bought a significant chunk of their stock stake at that sort of 70 Rand level. Then Ouch. it goes down. Now there's been a kind of minor uh, restructuring of an empowerment deal, which triggered another offer to minorities, of but at a level Rand. which was not attractive to the other minorities. So most people are basically waiting and seeing. As Wayne says, in the last set of results, they kitchen synced it. They basically wrote off everything. They wrote down the value of their factories. They took uh, you know, a write down on various businesses or lines of business or pharma stuff. It was around a billion rand that so they wrote they down. can only do better. The question really is, would Bidvest not be waiting to let things get really, really bad and then launch a more credible offer to the minorities or do you think they don't think no. that way they're I just going to run it no honestly I, I don't think they, they they're not they wouldn't make it look worse to buy it cheaper it's, yeah. it's not in there they yeah. own so much of the company they'll almost be shooting themselves in the yeah. foot and they've got control so they don't have to do yeah. anything more in this recent uh, offer to minorities i think they only picked up about another one yeah. percent of the company so it was very very marginal but i obviously bidvest has proven themselves over the years so you would be backing, doubt. would you be backing be Brian backing Joffe it, yeah. and the fact look, that he's got something look, to prove here, This Wayne? company's got very, very good brands and is mm. well established. They just expanded their, well, one of the problems they did was they expanded their manufacturing capacity hugely. Yeah. And then they didn't get the ARV tender and they sit with empty factories. Now that will fill up, they will get mm. the... And that all falls straight to the bottom line because the money spent already. Those in favor of the CFR deal were saying that Adcock needs an international partner for it to mm. be able to compete with the likes of Aspen. Well, Is there validity in that uh, argument? Maybe, although they do and have expanded into some Indian operations. I don't think that's the first order of business. I think uh, Brian's uh, lieutenant, Kevin Wakeford's first job is to staunch the losses and to reorganize the business operationally. And, you know, as Wayne says, they own brands like Panado and MyProdol. They've got a fabulous hospitals business, Sabax. You know, they make those sort of blood bags and drips, things that you get connected to. So I think there's plenty we, under we the hood. To, exactly. We, we're in agreement that the underlying business it's is a healthy, solid one yeah. and a healthy one. So we're running out of time, so we have to go hot, hot or, or not. not. I think it's hot. I think it's a great opportunity. I don't know how long it's going to take, but for me, it's an attractive one for sure. I hot as well. Hot. We, we've got consensus on Adcock.